Hello, this is Manoj. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, fluorine, the role of uh, fluorine in our uh, human body. Let's see what is fluorine. Uh, uh, basically, the fluoride is the negative form of uh, available fluorine. Uh, fluoride is a mineral in our bones and teeth. It is also found naturally in the following. They were uh, water, soil, plants, rocks and air. Uh, fluoride can be usually found in all these uh, mentioned here. Next, uh, we are going to see what were the different sources. The sources of uh, fluorine is basically the drinking water. The contents of fluorine in water is dependent on the soil content of fluoride. Uh, let's see the RDA, the 1.5 to 4 milligrams a day or uh, 1.2 ppm since it is present in water it is expressed as uh, uh, ppm uh, next uh, you can you are going to see how this fluorine is going to absorb and uh, excretion in organic uh, inorganic fluoride is absorbed readily in the stomach and uh, small intestine and uh, distributed almost entirely to the bone and teeth about 50 percent of the daily intake is excreted through urine whenever you take uh, fluoride as a mineral through water the remaining extra contents of fluoride will be excreted through our uh, uh, urine next uh, we are going to see different kinds of functions uh, of fluoride fluoride is uh, required for the proper formation of uh, bones and uh, teeth uh, for the proper formation of bones and teeth, uh, fluor fluorine is an essential mineral. Fluoride incorporated into hydroxyapatite and uh, the crystalline mineral of bones and teeth from fluoroapatite, which increases the hardness of bone and teeth. Basically, uh, the fluorine provides hardness to our teeth and protect and protection against the dental caries and uh, uh, attack by acids okay next uh, we are going to see uh, deficiency and toxicity toxicity uh, what were the different causes uh, if you take uh, uh, less amount of uh, fluorine into our body the causes were uh, the main causes were drinking water uh, that is in low content in fluorine fluorine content uh, fluorine deficiency can cause uh, dental caries uh, then causes uh, dental caries. Uh, toxi uh, toxicity. Toxicity means uh, overtaking of uh, uh, fluorine. Whenever uh, we take fluorine in extra content, uh, definitely there will be uh, side effects uh, uh, for uh, extra taking of fluorine. The excessive amounts of fluoride can result in dental fluorosis and skeletal fluorosis. Uh, dental fluorosis is important public health problem in several countries, uh, including our country like India. Uh, where the teeth will be rotten uh, in this uh, dental fluorosis causes uh, the, the main causes of uh, excessive intake of fluorine is fluorosis uh, excessive intake of fluoride is harmful to the body it is characterized by malting of enamel and uh, discorrelation of teeth uh, whenever we take uh, more amounts of fluorine the teeth will be uh, discorrelated uh, uh, from time to time uh, the next important cause is skeleton fluorosis if the injection of fluorine is uh, very high when you take fluorine very high it leads to the skeleton fluorosis where uh, the bones will be become so weak conditioned uh, next uh, we are going to see some basic benefits uh, of uh, intake of fluorine in our food uh, as uh, the fluorine is uh, uh, micro uh, micro mineral content uh, 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 we should provide that uh, fluorine in our diet uh, the body can't able to produce uh, fluorine on its own so let's see the benefits uh, fluoride is uh, beneficial to teeth because it helps to rebuild it helps to rebuild the uh, teeth slow down the loss of uh, minerals from uh, tooth enamel it uh, slow downs the loss of minerals from the tooth enamels reverse uh, early signs of tooth decay uh, whenever you see uh, tooth uh, decay uh, in uh, children it reverses the early signs it uh, also prevents the growth of uh, harmful oral bacteria in our mouth in the next uh, you can see the uh, uh, this, this is about all about uh, fluorine 
this is the conclusion so uh, so this is some basic information about uh, fluorine uh, to uh, human body uh, let's see the conclusion fluoride is naturally occurring mineral used in many dental products to uh, strengthen tooth enamel and prevent cavities as we seen earlier uh, this is also added to the local water supplies in uh, many american cities to provide fluorine as their content while the amount added to drinking water is considered to be relatively safe exposure of high levels fluoride may be linked with several health issues as we see that uh, skeletal fluorosis and uh, dental fluorosis uh, excessive intake of fluorine also leads to all kinds of some kinds of health issues uh, this is all about uh, the fluorine uh, so uh, in the next uh, 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 in the next slides we are going to see about uh, the zinc and uh, role of zinc in our human body thank you Hello, this is Manoj. In the previous video, we have seen about fluorine and its uh, role in our human body. Now, let us discuss about zinc and uh, its role in our uh, human body, its vital role in our human body. Uh, at first, uh, we are going to see the contents. Uh, what is it? Uh, what were the different functions, uh, benefits, uh, deficiency of uh, zinc sources, uh, toxic and dosage uh, and bottom line. Next, uh, what is it? What is zinc? Zinc is a nutrient that plays uh, many vital roles in our body. It is basically a nutrient, a micronutrient uh, which doesn't uh, produce on our own. So we are supposed to uh, produce the zinc as a diet to our body. Because our body doesn't naturally produce zinc, you must be obtain it through food or supplements. Uh, that is, uh, we should. Uh, uh, submit uh, you should uh, provide zinc to our body uh, in terms of our uh, natural diet okay next we're going to see uh, this is the various zinc contents uh, provided and uh, its various functions uh, zinc is required for the numerous process in our body including uh, genetic expression uh, enzymatic reactions uh, immune functions protein synthesis dna synthesis wound healing growth and development of the body uh, these were the various functions uh, of uh, zinc in our body next we are going to see uh, how this zinc uh, plays a vital role in our body uh, zinc is naturally found in a wide variety of uh, both plants and animal foods uh, foods that don't naturally contain this mineral such as breakfast cereals uh, uh, snack bars and uh, baking floor are often fortified with uh, synthetic forms of zinc. Basically, the breakfast cereals, uh, snack bars, etc., doesn't contain any form of zinc, so they were uh, fort uh, uh, fortified with uh, synthetic forms of zinc. So uh, they will add the contents of zinc to it. Uh, you can also take uh, zinc supplements or multi nutrient supplements that provide zinc. Okay, you can take. Uh, multiple supplements uh, to your body uh, as an intake uh, because of its uh, role in immune function zinc is like zinc is like added some nasal sprays uh, and uh, other natural cold treatment techniques so you can, uh, uh, here with uh, we have discussed about the functions of uh, uh, zinc next uh, we're going to see what is it uh, vital role in our human body Zinc is a vital mineral that our that our uh, body uses in countless ways. There are many ways in which uh, zinc can be used. In fact, zinc is the second most abundant uh, trace mineral in our body after iron and it is present in every cell. Each and every cell contains zinc. Zinc is necessary for uh, activity over 300 enzymes. Uh, uh, that aid in metabolism, digestion, nerve function and many other processes. In addition, it's critical for the development and function of uh, immune cells. This miner mineral is also fundamental to skin health, DNA synthesis and protein production. In the next, we are going to see its uh, various uh, health benefits. The, health uh, uh, the various health benefits of uh, zinc. Re uh, researchers show that zinc has uh, numerous health benefits. Uh, boost your immune system, accelerates uh, wound healing, uh, may reduce the risk of certain age related diseases uh, uh, such as uh, cancer etc. May help to treat uh, uh, pimples, uh, decrease uh, inflammation. 
so this were the various uh, health benefits uh, of uh, zinc now let's see uh, what happens if you take less amounts of zinc that is deficiency deficiency of zinc in our body although several zinc uh, deficiency is very rare you can see uh, that iron deficiency is very common but uh, zinc deficiency in human body is very rare it occur in people with uh, rare genetic mutations uh, only with uh, rare genetic uh, mutation uh, genetic mutations uh, breastfeeding infants uh, whose mothers don't have enough zinc people with alcoholic conditions alone taking certain immune suppression medications uh, only these people may uh, have the zinc deficiency and it is very rare case of uh, zinc deficiency uh, the symptoms uh, the symptoms of uh, severe uh, zinc deficiency include impaired growth and development uh, de uh, delayed sexual uh, maturity uh, skin rashes uh, uh, chronic diarrhea impaired uh, wound healing and behavioral issues these were the various symptoms of uh, severe zinc deficiency and uh, middler forms of uh, zinc uh, deficiency are very common uh, especially in children in developing countries where diets are often lacking in important nutrients in countries like india china etc in developing nations uh, people usually don't take uh, efficient uh, nutrient content as their food so uh, the middler forms of zinc deficiency is more common it is estimated around uh, 2 billion people worldwide are uh, deficient in zinc due to inadequate dietary intake mm, in the next slide uh we are going to discuss uh, we are going to discuss uh, what were the different kinds of uh, uh zinc deficiency included uh, risks what were the different kinds of risk uh, uh, in a zinc uh, deficiency included people uh, may have different kinds of diseases uh, with uh, gastro intestinal diseases uh, uh, pregnant and breastfeeding women older in fats who are excessively breastfed uh people with uh, sickle cell anemia uh, anemia people with uh, chronic kidney diseases uh those who abuse alcohol uh this were the different factors uh, which may lead to the zinc deficiency in people in the next slide uh, we will discuss about various food sources of uh, zinc uh the various food sources of uh, uh, zinc were mentioned here many animal uh, plants and uh, many animal and plant foods are naturally rich in zinc making it easy for the most people to consume adequate amounts of uh, zinc contents uh, highest uh, uh, zinc uh, content includes uh, shellfish uh, that is uh, crabs uh, lobsters uh, etc meat like uh, beef uh, lamb bison etc poultry like turkey chicken and uh, uh, normal chicken etc fish like uh, sandry salmon fish and sole fish etc and uh, uh, nuts and seeds like pumpkin seeds uh, cashew hemp and seeds uh, this were the uh, rich uh, zinc contents uh, uh, efficient uh, amount of uh, uh, zinc intake can uh, reduce the risk of various diseases in the future here uh, this continued slide uh, the dairy products eggs whole grain certain vegetables uh, were the rich contents of the zinc amounts uh, next slide we are going to see toxicity what is toxicity just as the deficiency in zinc can cause health complications excessive intake can also lead to negative side effects see if you take sufficient amount of zinc then it can uh, cause to uh, it can decrease uh, many health uh, risk activities but excessive intake leads to the negative side effects the symptoms of uh, excessive intake of zinc uh, include vomiting loss of appetite diarrhea abdominal cramps headaches reduced immune function decreased good hdl cholesterol levels this were the uh, toxicity factors uh, that can be seen when you take excessive intake of zinc next uh, you can see the recommended uh, dosages uh, pregnant and breastfeeding women should consume at least 11 to 12 mg per day respectively in order to uh, overcome uh, 
uh, in order to avoid over consumption stay away from high doses zinc supplements sir unless you are recommended by a doctor uh, tolerable upper level of zinc is 40 milligrams per day uh, which is more than 40 milligrams per day can be said as excessive intake of uh, zinc uh, finally uh, we will go to the conclusion uh, the conclusion is uh, zinc is needed for DNA synthesis, uh, immune function and metabolism growth as we seen earlier. It may reduce inflammation and uh, risk for some uh, age related diseases. So most people met uh, the idea of 11 milligrams for men and 8 milligrams for women through diet. But older adults and people with diseases that inhibit zinc absorption may need to supplement. Uh, because high dosage zinc supplements can lead to dangerous side effects. Uh, it's important to stick to the recommendations of doctor uh, and uh, only take supplements with the necessary uh, prescriptions of doctor. So excessive intake uh, may also lead to some kind of diseases. So this is all about uh, zinc and uh, fluorine. Uh, uh, this is all about zinc and fluorine. Uh, so thank you very much. Hi to everyone, my name is Ramakrishna. In this video, I am going to talk about chromium and its role in human body. So, these are all the contents I am going to present in this video. First, what is chromium and its functions, food sources and recommendations, health benefits, chromium deficiency and its side effects and some fa fast facts about chromium. So, as we know, chromium is an essential mineral that is not made by the body. It must be obtained from the diet. So it is an essential trace element needed by the body in relatively minute amount. There are approximately 4 to 6 milligrams of chromium stores in our body which can be found in kidneys, liver, muscles, heart and bones. So coming to what is chromium, chromium is a trace mineral meaning we need very small amount of the nutrient. What is, why, why do we need it? Chromium need, we need chromium to help our bodies to make use of fats and carbohydrates from the food we take. Chromium also aids in the metabolism of insulin and the synthesis of cholesterol. The functions. Our body requires a wide variety of minerals to function properly. One of these is chromium. Chromium is important in the metabolism of fats, proteins and carbohydrates. It simulates fatty acid and cholesterol synthesis which are important for brain function and other body processes. Chromium also aid in insulin action and a glucose metabolism. And food sources. There are wide variety of food sources in which we can get chromium. And the first one is broccoli. Broccoli is really good source of chromium and half cup contains about 11 micrograms. 11 micrograms. And second one is potatoes. A cup of mashed potatoes contains about 3 micrograms of calcium and beef. Beef is another food that has some chromium. A 3 ounce serving of beef cube contains 2 micrograms of chromium. Grape juice and wine. The Asian Roman, Romans were on the right track with their intake of grapes and red wines. Each cup of grape juice contains about 8 micrograms of chromium. If you want more adult beverage then reach for some wine. Uh, but as one study found, you should get a good amount of chromium from most wines. And fifth one, tomatoes. A cup of tomatoes contains about 1.2 micrograms of calcium. Tomatoes can find their ways effortlessly into most vegetarians as well as meal based recipes. And other forms of sources in your food, apples, bananas, chicken, brown rice, eggs, cow's milk, food made from whole grains like bread, spices like pepper. This all the, this all, all contains a little amount of chromium and other forms of chromium. We can get chromium through tablets and capsules. Recommendations. Women aged 19 to 50, they have to take up to 25 micrograms per day. And women aged 50 and older, they have to take 20 micrograms per day. And men aged 19 to 50, they have to take 35 micrograms per day. And men aged 50 and over, they have to take 30 micrograms per day. And infants and children are recommended to intake is up for up to 6 months, they have to take up to 0 0.5 micrograms per day. From 1 to 10 years, they have to take on an average of 5 to 10 micrograms per day. And coming to the health benefits. Chromium helps in the lower blood level and regulate insulin levels in the blood by improving sugar metabolism. It also lowers blood pressure. 
Mm, chromium helps in maintaining bone strength, especially in women. It, do, it uh, does this by preventing calcium loss. Chromium supplements may lessen the symptoms of depression by increasing tryptophan, which is also called happy chemical. It is also used by the athletes to improve their performance level by increasing energy and chromium deficiency. Symptoms of chromium deficiency include a craving of sweets, depression, a decrease in the body's ability to metabolize glucose and fats. And other deficiency include poor glucose level, poor energy production, unregulated appetite, and mood fluctuations, etc. And side effects. Chromium seems to have few side effects. There have been some reports of chromium causing irregular heartbeats, sleep disturbance, headaches, mood changes and allergic reactions. Chromium may increase the risks of kidney or liver damage. If you have kidney or liver damage, do not take chromium without talking to your doctor first. So what happens if you take chromium uh, in high amount? Pregnant and breastfeeding women should not take chromium supplements for children's consult a doctor. Some experts recommended that no one should take more than 200 micrograms per day without medical advice. So, doses of 1000 micrograms per day may be dangerous. There is a theoretical risk that it could increase the risks of cancer. There is also risk of cognitive and motor dysfunction from high doses. And some first, why do people take chromium? So, here are some reasons why people take chromium. Some studies have have shown that chromium supplements may be help for people with type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. So there's good there is good evidence that chromium can lower glucose levels and improve insulin sensitivity, although not all studies have shown a benefit. Um, fast fats and chromium. Here are some key points about chromium. Chromium is a mineral that humans need in very small quantities. Glu good so Good sources include broccoli, liver and beverages yeast which contains chromium in high amount. Chromium supplements may enhance muscle mass, weight loss and glucose control. But researchers are still working to confirm this. Nutritional supplements are like medications and those considering to taking supplements should use them with caution. Healthful food is the best and safest source of nutrients. Thank you. Hi, I am Ruthwick. Let's talk about copper and how it is useful for humans. Now, uh, for the first, we will see what are the contents that I am going to discuss about. Uh, I am going to discuss what is copper, what are the functions of the copper, uh, what are the ways we can uh, get uh, copper from, and uh, how much we need to uh, uh, take the copper intake, and how much it is allowed. Uh, we'll see about uh, the benefits of the copper in our human body and uh, what will be the deficiencies if we have not sufficient copper and we'll see uh, the side effects of uh, copper. Now, let me talk about what is copper. Uh, it is a trace element that is vital to the uh, health of the living organisms. Copper is essential for the proper functioning of organs and metabolic processes. This is why we require copper in the first place. Uh, now, uh, the copper uh, will be uh, generated by our body uh, and it will uh, take care of the supply uh, on a complex uh, homeostatic mechanism. So, we will see now what uh, the functions of the copper. The copper is required in the synthesis of hemoglobin, although it is not a component of hemoglobin. Uh, we need copper for the synthesis of hemoglobin, that is why we uh, require the copper. Uh, copper works with iron to form uh, red blood cells. Now, copper also is used for immune system health, and it helps for, uh, for uh, it helps to form collagens. Copper acts as an antioxidant that will uh, helpful uh, that will uh, help to reduce the aging of our body. Uh, copper also helps to uh, the body to absorb the iron. Copper plays some uh, role in the action of enzymes and copper helps in the maturation of elastin. It is a uh, part of the uh, uh, organ. It helps in the formation of bones and maintenance of melin sheets. Now let's talk about what are the sources of the copper. Now uh, the major source of copper is the liver of any uh, liver of the uh, animals. 
liver uh, is also uh, like one slice of 67 grams of calf liver will give you 10.3 milligrams of copper now and another uh, let me talk about another source of uh, our li- uh, let me talk about another source of copper it is oysters oysters are a good source of copper it provides about 7.6 milligrams of uh, copper for 3.5 ounces uh, okay now let me talk about another form of a copper intake it is spirulina spirulina is a powdered food supplement made from cyanobacteria or blue green algae once consumed by the uh, ancient aztecs it emerged as a health food after nasa successfully used it as dietary supplements for astronauts on space missions as we know uh, the food uh, that is taken by the astronauts is uh, calculated in terms of weight and in terms of the calories and all the nutrient contents we cannot take a large uh, amount of uh, food into the space so uh, the consumption of nutrients will also be reduced at times like this we uh, for the intake of the cop- now we will talk about the leafy greens the greens the stuff that is uh, required for the uh, most of the vegetarians the greens like spinach kale and swiss chard are extremely healthy a cooked swiss chard provides around 33 percentage of copper in a single cup that is around 173 grams a cup of cooked spinach that is around 180 grams also uh, gives 33 percent of of uh, copper required now this is the part that is everyone likes dark chocolate no one would have thought that dark chocolate is a uh, source for copper right yeah but is it is a fact that dark chocolate uh, that is around 100 grams gives around massive 200 percentage of copper so guys feel free to have a dark chocolate in your diet now let me talk about the daily allowances that is the how much you need uh, how much uh, capacity that is you, you can uh, intake of the copper now for uh, six months uh, to the boy or a girl it is uh, recommended 200 mcg daily and for infants from 7 to 12 months it is recommended 220 mcg daily now let me talk about the adults adults uh, from 19 years old and older require 900 mcg daily and for pregnant women uh, they would uh, recommend 1000 mcg daily and for the breast uh, feeding women uh, 1300 mcg daily now let me go through about the health benefits of the copper the copper with iron enables the body to form the red blood cells it helps maintain healthy bones blood vessels nerves and immune function and it contributes to iron absorption you know the copper is the only way that the iron can be absorbed sufficient copper in the diet may help prevent cardiovascular diseases and osteoporosis too copper prevents neutropenia which provides good health of wbcs that is white blood cells copper plays an important role in maintaining collagen and elastin major structural components of our body scientists have hypothesized that copper may have antioxidant properties and that together with other antioxidants a helpful intake may help prevent skin aging so feel free then guys ladies and uh, boys to take copper now let me go through the deficiencies of copper while a copper deficiency is rare some health conditions and other factors can increase the risk these include genetic defects of copper metabolism absorption problem that is we are some people have a problem of absorbing the copper too high an intake of zinc or vitamin c supplements if we take vitamin c and zinc supplements then the copper will be deficiency differentiated some conditions such as central nervous system demyelination polyneuropathy myelopathy and inflammation of optic nerves will also affect the body to take less uh, copper since copper is stored in the liver deficiency develops uh, slowly over time now let me go through the side effects of copper uh, that is when it is very low 
if their copper levels are very low then it may lead to anemia low body temperature bone fractures osteoporosis loss of skin pigmentation thyroid problems metabolic diseases can affect the way the body absorbs vitamins and minerals so guys it is important to take uh, copper now let me go through the risks copper supplements can interact with the following it can interact with the birth control pills and hormone therapy and uh, it can interact with non steroidal anti inflammatories uh, the nsaids such as aspirin and ibro uh, ibuprofen penicillin used to reduce copper levels in wilson's disease allopurinol uh, gout treatment zinc supplements these products will reduce or increase the levels of copper in the blood leading to an imbalance of the copper so guys when you take the supplements uh, you need to got uh, contract with the copper supplements right now let me go uh, talk about some facts about the copper yeah now let me uh, let me talk about the facts about copper copper is necessary for a range of bodily functions uh, as of you know you might have uh, known what are the bodily functions right yeah thanks copper deficiency is rare except in specific conditions such as menkes disease copper supplements are not usually uh, necessary and may lead to an imbalance so you don't need uh, necessary uh, you don't need to take copper supplements as it is already produced in your body but if you take the copper supplements just take you into that you don't uh, lead to an uh, imbalance of the copper a copper imbalance has been linked to alzheimer disease uh, most of you know uh, what is alzheimer disease right alzheimer disease is something that you uh, lose your memory at, uh, as you age Uh, anyone uh, who is considering copper supplements should first speak to a doctor as i said it is naturally produced in the body if you want to take copper supplements you have to recommend a doctor thank you and this will be my ending slide thank you